Hello friends, welcome back to the lecture series on high voltage engineering. Today we are going to discuss our next topic that is testing of cables and power capacitors. The cable and capacitors are the apparatus, electrical apparatus are used for the purpose of electricity. That is one of the apparatus of the power system and we are going to test these two apparatus with different methods. Now the question arises why this cable is included with the power capacitors. The reason is very simple as all of you know capacitor means a plate separated by a certain distance having a insulation in between. So one plate, if it is positively charged, the other plate get negatively charged. And the purpose of capacitor is to store the electrostatic energy. Like inductor stores electromagnetic energy, capacitor stores electrostatic energy. Whenever the cables are used for the distribution of the power, for the distribution of power, whatever the electrostatic charges which are get developed on that cable insulation, decides the effect called the capacitors and therefore whatever the methods which are used for the testing of power capacitors that can be same used for the testing of cables. So cables are very important electrical apparatus for the transmission of the electrical energy by underground means. So it means the underground can be done for the cables that is underlaying is done for the cables. They are also very important means for transmitting voltage signals at high voltages. For power engineers, large power transmission cables are of importance. That is very, very important. And hence testing of power cables only is considered here. Of the different electrical and other tests prescribed, there are different methods, important methods to ensure that cables withstand the most severe conditions that are likely to arise in service. Now, the different tests on cables may be classified into categories. The classification is the dielectric power factor test, high voltage test and partial discharge test. For over voltage and withstand test, samples have to be carefully prepared and terminated. Otherwise, excessive leakage or end flashovers may occur. So during testing, the normal length of the cable sample, which is used, that varies from 50 centimeter to 100, sorry, to 50 centimeter to 10 meter. The terminations are generally made by shielding the end conductor with stress shields or terminations to relieve the ends from excessive high electrical stress. A few terminations may be used that is uh, that can be used for during power factor test the cables ends are provided with shields so that the surface leakage current is avoided from the measuring circuits. So this is what the introduction to this testing of the cables and power capacitors. Let us start with the first methodology called as dielectric power factor test. This uh, dielectric power factor test is done using the high voltage sharing bridge. You can see this high voltage sharing bridge shown in the diagram where we have the test specimen with standard capacitor the variable resistors and R3C3 parallel variable capacitors where the D is that is say galvanometer and G be the ground terminal G be the ground terminal connected to the supply transformer it means this complete unit sharing bridge is connected to the supply transformer. The power factor or dissipation factor that is called as tan delta power factor or dissipation factor that is called tan delta is measured at 0 0.51, 1 1.66, 1 
and two times the rated voltage of the cable rated voltage of the cable so that can be done measurement two times the rated uh, voltage and that voltage must be a phase voltage of the cable so let us understand what is sharing breach so we have already discussed this particular methodology while discussing the power capacitors while discussing the power capacitors so this method is also used for the high voltage capacitors so in power frequency range of 25 to 100 hertz sharing bridge is very versatile and sensitive bridge and is readily suitable for high voltage measurement the stress depends on the relative permittivity and tan delta that is permittivity and tan delta that is loss factor that can be obtained with this particular bridge called as high voltage sharing bridge the diagram says that diagram is shown in the figure so the lossy capacitor or capacitor with the dielectric between electrodes is uh, represented as an imperfect capacitor of capacitance say cx cx which will uh, cx together with the resistance rx so we have that rx internal resistance the standard capacitor is shown that is cs that varies from 50 to 500 microfarad or rather picofarad Pico farad. Pico means 10 to the power minus 12 farad. So the value of that CS reaches to 500 pico farad. The variable arms that is R4 and C3 R3 that is C3 is variable that is used. So the balance is obtained when we have Z1 upon z2 is equal to z4 upon z3 where we know the values of these impedances so z1 is this value that is a to e right it is a to e so i just say z a e impedance between a e upon impedance between a f impedance between AF or FA is equal to Z3 means FB upon ZBE. So impedance ZAE means Z1 and what is Z1 value? It is RX plus 1 upon J omega CX. It means Rx plus J or Rx minus uh, Rx minus J omega C uh, J omega sorry Rx minus J uh, J X C X right right it is Rx minus J X that is capacitive reactance for this C X and what is X C it is one upon J omega C X so when that J goes down the sign changes to plus so that minus sign becomes plus then z2 z2 is equal to 1 upon j omega cs standard capacitor z3 it is parallel combination of r3 and variable c3 so parallel combination finally gives you this j omega c3 r3 that is r3 upon this and last is z4 which is variable resistance r4 okay so this particular balance is obtained when we have z1 upon z2 equal to z4 upon z3 that is these are the values of impedances the impedances values can be written so now if we put these values in the uh, in the balance equation balance uh, that is equilibrium what we get the values of cx here this particular value is already discussed the, the derivation is already discussed in the uh, the discussion of high voltage power frequency voltage measurement right that is the testing method only 
so you can refer few of the previous lectures so cx can be given as r3 upon r4 into cs this is what the value of cx so i just write down this value in bracket so that you everyone can understand then the value of rx so small rx is equal to c3 upon cs into r4 see basically these values can be calculated by just solving and putting z1 z2 z3 z4 values then the loss angle tan delta see finally ultimately we have to do this measurement so tan delta is omega cx rx is equal to omega c3 r3 that gives you the measurement of tan delta that is loss angle measurement and this loss angle measurement is nothing but the power factor measurement that loss angle measurement is nothing but the power factor measurement so this power factor or dissipation factor that is tan delta which is written here that can be measured at 0.51 1.66 and two times the rated phase voltage at phase voltage twice of that 1.66 times of that or maybe same or half of the rated phase voltage so this is what the methodology called as dielectric power factor phase the another testing which is called as a high voltage test on cables so cables are tested for withstand voltages using the power frequency ac dc and impulse voltage so high voltage testing is basically done on power frequency ac then dc and impulse impulse means high voltage high frequency at at a different voltage levels at a different voltage levels that depends on the the utilization of that particular cable now at the time of manufacture the entire cable is passed through a high voltage test at the rated voltage to check the continuity of the cable so it means that has to like that particular cable must be tested at a high voltage at a particular rated voltage for which that particular cable is going to be used and that is to be checked to continuity of the cable as a routine test means this particular testing high voltage testing on the cable is called as routine routine means again as i already said routine means it must be continuously used for all the cables uh, whatever the specimens whatever the uh, whatever the uh, manufacturing is done right so all the cables must be tested on this particular uh, high voltage testing right it has to go on through this high voltage testing and therefore it is referred as routine test so this routine test uh, the cable is tested applied applying an ac voltage of 2.5 times the rated value for 10 minutes so the testing is done at this particular voltage so what is that voltage level the testing voltage so i just say vt is 2.5 times the rated voltage 2.5 times the rated voltage of the cable the time period for which it is to be tested is of 10 minutes it means what for 10 minutes that particular voltage is to be kept for 10 minutes that particular test specimen sample is to be kept then if there is no damage to the cable insulation then that particular cable can be used it means that cable has passed the test that cable has passed the test the type tests are done on cable samples means type tests can be done on cable samples using both high voltage dc and impulse voltages it means now next the cable can be tested for the rest of the two voltages right and that particular test called as type test if one of the test has passed or if one of the type of voltage ac voltage power frequency if the cable has passed then 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 the samples can be taken few of the samples can be taken from that complete unit and that can be tested on dc and impulse voltage and therefore it is called as type test the dc test consists of applying 1.8 times the rated dc voltage of negative polarity 
and that can be applied for 30 minutes. So here, one of the tests that is done, another test type test, where it is one point times the rated voltage. But the time for which it is to be kept is more and it is 30 minutes on negative polarity, on negative polarity. And the cable system is said to be fit. It means it has to pass that test. Uh, it has to pass that particular test. For impulse test, impulse voltage of prescribed magnitude, whatever the prescription is given, that a magnitude as per specification should be applied. And the cable has to withstand, uh, that particular cable has to withstand the five applications, five applications without any damage. So it means five times that voltage has to be given. Like one test is given of impulse voltage, second test, third test, fourth test, and fifth test. So five applications of the impulse voltage to be given. Generally, after the impulse test, the power frequency dielectric power factor test is also done to ensure that no failure occurred during the impulse test. Okay, so this is all about the high voltage test on cables. We have another thing is partial discharge test partial discharge test this partial discharge measurement and the discharge locations are important for cables since the life of the insulation at a given voltage stress at a voltage stress that depends on the internal discharge now we have already discussed what is mean by a partial discharge Partial discharge means the voids which are present in any of the insulation. If I just consider a insulation like this, there is an insulation and in that particular insulation, there is a void present. The insulation thickness is say one centimeter and the thickness of this void is one mm. One mm means 0.1 centimeter 0.1 centimeter so as compared to 1 centimeter 0.1 centimeter is very small but this particular void is present so if this void is present in that insulation that may give the internal discharge and that creates the voltage stress on that complete unit of the cable also the weakness of the insulation or faults can be detected with the help of this particular test and that is that portion of the cable if weak may be uh, removed if necessary if that particular portion is weak right if that particular portion is weak then we have to uh, remove it the equivalent circuit of the cable for discharges that can be shown in the diagram so you have to refer the given diagrams which are given in not next slide so let us discuss those figures so that everyone can understand. So we have figures like, let us say figure A. So this is what figure A and figure B. So if the detector is connected through a coupling capacitor to one end of the cable, one end of the cable that is shown in this figure. You can see this is your figure A. This is called cable equivalent circuit. Cable equivalent circuit. Here, what you can see is there is a resistance, inductance, and capacitance. So I just say this is your inductance, capacitance. Again, inductance, resistance, capacitance, and so on. And here it is discharge. Here it is discharge, right? Then we have, so this is called as cable equivalent circuit for discharge. Then discharge detector, it is represented as DD. You can see here that discharge detector DD, okay? That connection to the long length of cable. And there are two figures, figure A and figure B. So if the detector is connected through a coupling capacitor, here there, there is a coupling capacitor to one end of the cable, that is shown in this figure, it will receive the transient traveling wave directly from the cavity 
towards the nearer end. So we have a transient traveling wave. Transient traveling wave. So when this travels, this particular transient travels, this particular waveform and travels, right? So nearer to the end. And after a short short time, after a short time, a second traveling wave pulse reflected from the far end is observed. Thus, the detected response is the combination of the above two transient pulses. Okay, so this is what related to figure A. Again, we are repeating this. Detector is connected through a coupling capacitor to one end of the cable. Then it receives the tra transient traveling wave from the cavity towards the nearer end. After a short time, another after a short time, uh, a second traveling wave, a second traveling wave that reflected from the far end and that detects the response. That is the combination of the two transient pulses. Now, what is there in figure B? So that figure B is another type of connection. Another type of connection where there is no severe reflection is involved except a second order effect. Except a second order effect of negligible magnitude. Now, two transients will arrive at both the ends. Two transients will arrive at the both the ends. So let us check the figure. So here you can see again there is a discharge detector used with the coupling capacitor. Okay. Now there are two traveling waves. Here we have that high voltage application. Here we have that high voltage application. Here this is the high voltage application connected to one end and discharge detector to the point end, cable end. Right. Here on both the ends that high voltage is applied. So this is what figure B. So no severe reflection is involved except a second order effect of negligible magnitude. Now two transients will arrive at both the ends of the cable. So here we find two transients. We have we to find two transients from this end and from this end. So we find two transients. Okay. So uh, this two transients from both the ends of the cable and the super imposition of the two pulses is detected. This can be obtained by adding the responses of the two transients. The superimposition of the two responses may be, give rise to a serious error in the measurement of the discharge magnitude. The magnitude of the possible error may be determined mainly by the shape of response of the discharge detector, maybe with the discharge detector. So here the points are already mentioned. So this is all about this particular figures. So now, few more points which I want to share here, like the voltage dip caused by a discharge at a fault that is void is propagated as a traveling wave along the cable. This wave is detected as a voltage pulse across the terminals of the cable ends. By measuring the time duration between the pulse, the distance at which the discharge is taking place from the cable end can be determined. The shapes of the voltage pulses depend on the nature of the discharge. So we have the typical voltage shapes. So let us say wave shape first. So I just want to shape, uh, show this. Here we have time. Here we have time on x-axis and the voltage discharge in void. So it reaches high value and then due to discharge, it backs to this position. The time is the initial time where the discharge occurs. So let that time be T0. This is the magnitude of that voltage where the discharge takes place. So uh, wave shapes observed with oscilloscope, this kind of wave shape that can also be observed. So this is the discharge in void. This is the discharge in void. Discharge in void. So this typical wave shape is shown in this. Then there is a detection circuit for the pulses that can also be drawn. Now that detection circuit can 
consist of the capacitor capacitor and a resistance and a resistance so this is capacitor and resistance across which the voltage can be measured okay this can also be drawn without the capacitor also that is this is the combination called resistor capacitor with the cable connection okay then attenuation traveling wave that attenuation traveling wave can be drawn where we get the height of the impulse with the distance so the distance can be shown on x axis and the height of impulse height of impulse can be shown on y axis so this is the detection circuit of the pulses and the attenuation of the traveling wave of the cables is given in this diagram generally the pulses detected across the resistor are distorted after passing through the amplifier of the discharge detector so this is already discussed this wave wave pulse across the terminals of the cable ends by measuring the time duration the distance discharge cable end the shapes of voltage pulses that is the nature of discharges are shown okay so you can see this particular figure for understanding purpose then in order to scan the entire cable length for voids or imperfection in manufacture the bare core of the cable is passed through a high electric field high electric field and the discharge location is done and discharge location location is done the core of the material is passed through a tube of insulating material filled with a distilled water filled with a distilled water four electrodes in the form of rings are mounted at both the ends four electrodes in the form of rings are mounted at both the ends of the tube as well as at the middle such that they have the electrical contact with the water such that they have electrical contact with the water the middle electrodes are energized the middle electrodes are energized with the high voltage and the other two electrodes and cable conductor are grounded so this is very very important so there are four electrodes that forms that is in the form of rings mounted at both the ends of the tube as well as at the middle that have electrical contact with the water the middle electrodes are energized with high voltage and the other two electrodes and cable conductor are grounded so you can see this figure also for the purpose you can see these figures for the purpose okay now if the a discharge occur in the portion between the middle electrode as the cable is passed between the middle electrodes portion the discharge is detected and is located at that length of cable so if the discharge occurs at the middle electrode cable is passed between the middle electrodes portion the discharge is detected and is located at the length of at that length of the cable so this test is very convenient for isolating the defective insulation at the factory site the manufactured cable before being rolled onto its former can be conveniently passed through the test apparatus the defective part can be isolated and cut off from the cable reel before it is sent from the factory so before sending with from the factory the scanning can be done so this we can say that it's a scanning method we can say that it's a scanning way of the cable scanning way of the cable then we have another test called as life test life test where the life can be tested so life tests are intended for reliability studies in service 
this particular test is done only to check the reliability whether we can rely on that particular cable or not in order to determine the expected life to the cable under normal stress accelerated life test using increased voltages are performed on actual cable length so this reliability and actual cable can be tested on the voltage actual cable can be tested on the voltage and that stress level can be checked it is established that the relationship between the maximum electrical stress that maximum electrical stress when we say it is related and given by em and the life of the cable insulation in hours that is t approximately so t that can gives us the equation em now proportionality constant can be represented as k that k which is constant depends on the field conditions and the material multiplied by e to the power minus 1 upon n okay so by conducting long duration life test at increased stress let us say 1 hour to 1000 hour the expected life at the rated stress may be determined so this can be done on the cables or even on the power capacitors so hopefully you understood this particular methodology of testing the cables and or our apparatus. So thank you so much. Take care.